We previously discussed categorical variables and how the distribution of a categorical variable can be displayed in what's called a pie chart. I'll leave links in the description to the videos where we introduce these things. As a quick recap, a pie chart is made by dividing a circle, which represents some whole, proportionally into slices, which each represent some group from the whole. For example, here's a table showing the results of a poll asking men and women about their primary health concerns. Some said their primary concerns were physical, some mental, some said they had no primary health concerns. Here we have two categorical variables, gender and primary health concern. We could calculate the conditional distribution of primary health concern across the two genders, which would look like this. We have the conditional distribution for males and the conditional distribution for females. To make sure this chart is clear, this row is representing all males, and so it adds to 100%. For example, 54.2% of males had physical health concerns as their primary concerns. This row represents all of the women, it adds up to 100%, and for example, 20.2% of females had no primary health concerns. In this case, we can look at all of the males as a whole, and thus make a pie chart for the males and their primary health concerns. And we can look at the females as a whole, and represent their primary health concerns with a pie chart. Notice how each circle is divided into slices which proportionally represent some group from the whole. For example, this slice is 20.9% of the whole circle, it represents the males who had no primary health concerns. Of course, we're not really here to talk about pie charts, we're here to talk about something else. We can do the same thing as with a pie chart, but with a bar instead of a circle to get what's called a segmented bar chart. In the same way that a pie chart is divided into slices, a segmented bar chart is divided into segments. One of the advantages of a segmented bar chart is that it makes it a little easier to put multiple conditional distributions side by side and compare between them. We can see that we could put these two pie charts directly side by side, but it's a little bit difficult to directly compare the different slices. It's made easier in this case because the chart happens to include exact percentage labels, but those aren't always present, and that doesn't really contribute to the picture, it just gives us more information. So let's take those same conditional distributions from before and use it to construct a segmented bar chart. The nice thing about the segmented bar chart is we can put both bars, one for males and one for females, on the same chart. Now these work like pie charts in that each bar will represent all of its group, all males and all females. That means each bar will have the same height. The height of each bar corresponds to 100%, 100% of one group and 100% of the other group. So on our y-axis we'll have percents, let's say 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, you've got to go up to 100%. And then of course on the x-axis we will have our two groups, males and females. Now just like we use color to distinguish between the slices in a pie chart, we'll want to use color to distinguish between the segments in a segmented bar chart. So before we start constructing the bars, we want to make sure we've decided on those colors. We'll say that the orange segments represent the percentage of people who say they have no primary health concerns, red represents mental health concerns, and blue represents physical health concerns. Of course, if you were just doing this with a pencil, instead of using colors, you could use shading patterns. You could say no shading at all represents none. You could say that a diagonal shading pattern represents mental. And you could say that this sort of dotted or speckled shaded pattern represents physical. But let's begin making these bars. We'll start with the bar for males. Males had 54.2% of their group saying that physical health concerns were their primary concern. So the first part of the male bar should be a blue segment which goes up 54.2%. 50% is right in between 40 and 60, so 54 would just be a little bit bigger than that, so maybe right up to there. So this is representing the portion of men who said they had primarily physical health concerns, and I'm just shading that blue. 
Next, we'll look at the mental health concerns. For males, that was about 24.9%. So we're going to stack this on top of this bar. So you need to do addition to see how high this should go. 54.2% plus 24.9 is 79.1. So when we add this red segment onto the bar, we should be going up to about 79.1%, which is just under 80%, so something like that. And again, I will shade this red, and that's the portion of men which had mental health concerns as their primary concerns. Now, the next category is the men who said they have no primary health concerns. That's the last category, so I know it has to go up to 100%. I don't have to do any funny math there, and I will shade that orange. So this bar represents the males. Now we'll construct the bar for the females. 54.8% of females said their primary health concerns were physical, so that bar should go up to 54.8%, which is just a touch above the height of the male blue segment. So that would look something like that, and I'm going to shade this blue. Now note, we're making the choice of keeping the widths of these bars the same. Even though the number of males and the number of females in the poll is different. If we go back to the data, we had more males than females. So you might say that the bar for females should in fact be thinner than the bar for males. Because if the area of the male bar and the area of the female bar are the same, that would suggest that perhaps the number of males and females is the same. But that's really not what a segmented bar chart communicates. The segmented bar chart isn't letting us compare direct counts of males and females, and so the widths need to represent that. Rather, it's just letting us see how the male population is distributed across this categorical variable compared to how the female population is distributed. So generally, we will want these bars to have the same width. If you want a plot like this, but where different widths are used to represent the different sizes of the groups, so in this case, the width of the male bar would be bigger, you should look into mosaic plots. But for a segmented bar chart, that's not what we do. We keep these widths equal. Continuing with the female bar here, we have that 25.1% of females said mental health concerns were their primary concerns, so we'll be going up to about the same place as with the males. 54.8 plus 25.1 is 79.9, so pretty much right on the 80% line. And again, I will shade this in red. And once again, the last category, the females who said they have no primary health concerns, that has to go up to 100% to make up the total number of females in the survey. And that is how we make a segmented bar chart. The last thing we might want to do is make sure we label that y-axis with percent. So that's representing the percents of each group. In this case, the segmented bar chart for males and the segmented bar chart for females look about the same. This suggests that there's no association between sex and primary health concern. Of course, if in the female bar the red segment was much bigger than in the male bar, that would suggest we have some evidence that, at least among the people we polled, females are more likely to have mental health concerns as their primary concern. But as it stands, the segmented bar chart gives us a quick way to see that the two categories have very similar distributions of primary health concerns. And for comparison, here is a computer-generated segmented bar chart which comes from the same data. And once again, if you didn't have colors and you were only using a single pencil, you could use shading patterns to distinguish between the segments. You could have no shading, diagonal shading, and then a speckled pattern, and you could make up more patterns as necessary. But that's what a segmented bar chart is and how to make one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my statistics course and statistics exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching. Audio.